In this video, I will show you how to do boot Linux Mint and Windows 11. Now, this is the brand new easy guide and one of the safest ways to set up a do boot on any computer without any data loss. Also, at the end of this video, I will show you how to remove Linux Mint safely from the do boot. So make sure to watch the video until the end to avoid any confusion. The only requirements of this video, you need Windows 11 or Windows 10 installed on your PC or laptop, 8 gigs or higher USB drive to create a bootable disk with Linux Mint, at least 30 GB of free space reserved on your existing drive. Now let's proceed with creating a free space for Linux Mint. Now right click on the desktop and open terminal, then type diskmgmt to access the disk manager which displays all connected drives and their partitions. In my case, you can see that one drive is connected. Disk 0 has three partitions. The first one is the EFI partition where the Windows bootloader is present. The second one is the main Windows and the last one is the recovery partition. I'm going to choose the C drive to shrink the free space for Linux Mint. In your case, it might be D, E, or F, whatever. Just choose any partition and right click on it. Now choose shrink volume and allocate a minimum of 30 GB or more for Linux Mint. You can type the value in megabytes. In my case, I'm going to allocate 150,000 megabytes. Then click on shrink. This will create unallocated free space. And that's it, we have done creating a free space for Linux Mint. Then open your web browser and visit the official website of Linux Mint to download the latest version. Linux Mint offers various flavors, including Cinnamon, XFCE, and Mate Desktop. Now for this video, I choose the Cinnamon Edition, which is known for its simplicity and user-friendliness. Then head over to the second link and download the Rufus. Once both files are downloaded, save them somewhere on your computer for easier navigation. Before installing Linux Mint, it's recommended to create a system restore point on your Windows computer. Now go ahead and search for restore point in the start menu and open it. Now this tool allows to take a snapshot of the current system state. If something goes wrong with the Linux installation, you can use this backup to restore your system back to the normal state. If you are using Windows 11 Professional, disable BitLocker encryption before proceeding. BitLocker can interfere with Linux installations. For Windows 11 Home users, this feature is permanently disabled. So this way you can skip this step. For more information about this, see the link in the description. Now go ahead and open the Rufus. and connect your USB stick to your computer. Then select the USB device and import the Linux Mint ISO file. I'm going to choose the partition scheme as GPT as this laptop uses UFI mode with GPT partition scheme. If your system uses legacy BIOS, you can select MBR. Now follow the prompts and accept to start creating a bootable USB with Mint. Now this will take some time depending on the writing speed of your USB device. Once it's done, now it's time to boot the system into BIOS using the keyboard shortcut based on your motherboard. Now first turn off your computer. When the screen goes black, turn it back on. 
and press your BIOS shortcut key repeatedly. Now mostly it could be F2, F9, escape or delete. In my case, it's escape key to boot into startup menu, then pressing F10 to enter the BIOS mode. Then inside BIOS settings, look for the boot options and enable USB boot. Then you can enable or disable Secure Boot, it's up to you. Since Linux Mint supports Secure Boot, for now, I choose to disable. Then change the UV boot order. Now make sure to set the USB flash device as primary boot device. This way, the computer will check for the USB device first for an operating system and boot from it. Now once you have made these changes, save and exit from the BIOS. Now your system will boot into Linux Mint from the USB device. If it fails to boot, use the boot menu to load the install media. Once your computer has booted into the Mint Live session, go ahead and connect to the internet using Ethernet cable or Wi-Fi. Once it's done, click on this icon to start installing Mint. Now go ahead and choose your system language and click continue. Then select a keyboard layout and click on next. Then take this option to install multimedia codecs. If you prefer to install Mint on a separate drive, use the second option. Additionally, you can opt for the manual installation to create partitions manually. However, for now, let's choose the first option which automates partition creation using the free space we have created earlier and installs Mint alongside the Windows Boot Manager. Then click on Next. Now select your time zone, create user account and click Continue. Now this will take a few minutes. So sit back and please be patient. Now once it's done, click on Restart. Upon Restart, you will be prompted to remove the USB drive and press Enter. Now, by default, it will boot into Grub Boot Manager. From there, you can choose to boot into Windows 11 or Linux Mint. For now, let's boot into Mint. Then open the terminal inside Mint and run this command. To edit the grub file and change the default grub timer to 30 seconds. If you don't see the Windows boot entry, uncomment this line. Once it's done, save the changes by pressing Ctrl plus O and exit with Ctrl plus X. Now type this command to update the grub configuration. Then reboot your computer. Now you can see the grub time limit has increased to 30 seconds and Windows boot entry is also showing. As a bonus part of the video, if in case you don't like Linux Mint and decide to uninstall it, reboot your computer back to Windows 11. 
Then open the command prompt or terminal and type this command and press enter to launch the disk manager. Now next to the C drive, you can see a primary healthy partition of around 150 GB related to Mint. Now go ahead and remove this partition by right clicking on it and choose delete volume. Now you will see a free space that you can use and expand windows. Right click on the C drive and choose to extend the volume. Now once it's done, we need to delete the Grub Boot Manager present inside the Windows EFR partition. To do so, open CMD as administrator. Then inside here, type disk part and press enter. Now type list disk to display all the connected drives to the PC. In my case, I have only one connected drive where Windows and Mint boot files are installed. I'm going to select this drive by typing this command. Then type list partition to list out all the partitions on this drive. You might see three plus partitions. Now look for the system partition or EFI partition. Now mostly it's the first partition. Select this partition by typing this command. Once it's selected, type assign letter is equals to R to mount this partition temporarily. Now type exit to get out of the disk part prompt. Now type R colon and press enter. Now this will change the directory. Here type dir. To list the contents of that partition. Now change the directory into EFI by typing this command. If I type dir, this will list the contents of the EFI folder. Here you can see Ubuntu and Windows boot files. It's obvious that Mint is based on Ubuntu, which is why it displays Ubuntu. Do not touch the Windows and boot folders. We need to delete the Ubuntu folder. To do so, type this command and press enter. And that's it. Linux Mint has been successfully removed. Now restart your computer. It should boot your system directly into Windows 11 without any boot issues. This is how you properly set up a do boot on your Windows computer with Linux Mint. And that's pretty much it. What do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you have any questions or queries, do post them in the comment section. But thank you so much for watching. This has been KSK Royal. I will see you in the next one.